So ADS-B, uh, many of you saw that I had posted a few weeks ago that I had this new ADS-B unit here that I'm going to be using for Sonoma to Oshkosh. And of course, uh, it did generate a, a fair amount of discussion. Now, most of what I'm going to talk about is related to um, some rules and some regulations and how this might be used for ultralights here in the United States. Um, but um, there is a little bit of information, of course, that other people in other parts of the world can uh, go ahead and uh, uh, download or, or, or find out through, through the Internet. So that's my first caveat. This is primarily driven towards a United States audience. Um, the thing that I, I, I should probably take a step back from is why would a paramotor or an ultralight pilot want ADS-B? And as most of you know, here in the United States, ultralights are re relatively unregulated. There's very few rules. Um, and uh, so we, we can fly with uh, a great deal of um, um, uh, anonymity, I, I, I might say. So, um, well, there have been very, very few incidents involving ultralights um, and other forms of aircraft that are much faster. Um, there are some of us who are conducting ultralight activities that um, probably go ahead and sort of exceed what the majority of people are doing. And so what I'm talking about here are predominantly things like big cross-country flights where we might be flying at pretty high altitudes and where we're much more likely to come into contact with other faster aircraft that um, are uh, in the same airspace that we might be trying to use or we might find ourselves in the airspace that they might typically more use. Um, and then the other thing is uh, if you happen to be in an area where um, maybe the airspace is predominantly more busy because that's closest to where you, you live and uh, you need the ability to add this additional level of safety. So here in the United States, um, it's not a requirement to have ADS-B and um, it's really uh, something that most of the pilots that we've talked to that have shown an interest, it's considered an added piece of safety. So just a, it's an optional piece of equipment that you can go ahead and try and add additional safety to the operations that you have. And so um, there really wasn't very much here in the United States um, for us to consider. It's uh, somewhat uh, regulated still and, and makes it kind of difficult. And in fact, there really isn't uh, an approved product out there that we can just uh, go ahead and use. And of course, our ultralights are also not registered. And these ADSB systems use what's called an ICAO hex number, which is generated uh, based off your registration with the FAA. So um, if I take a couple steps back um, in other parts of the world, uh, you Avionics, which is the maker of this particular product, um, has a product called the Sky Echo. And uh, that is actually, um, uh, authorized and legal for many parts in Europe, the United Kingdom and, and Australia. And so um, it's, a, it's a much cheaper solution for those areas. And I won't really get into the technical aspects of the different frequencies and, and how technical there's much smarter guys like Jeff Gowen and uh, Mark Ingman who helped me uh, get connected and gave me a lot of information on this. And then of course, um, if you contact a company like UAvionics, uh, that make these products primarily for general aviation and for uh, UAS drones. Um, but the ultralight market is an area that um, they have these products that uh, potentially can work. And they've actually been working throughout the course of this year through several of us reaching out to them um, and then a connection with the FAA. Um, and as a result of that, we now have this product here, which is called the Ping 2020i. Um, that was primarily made for, uh, for UAS or drone operations, um, but we are now permitted to utilize so long as we have a registration to get that IKEA number. And so the process is actually quite simple, um, which is that we can register our paramotors. Um, there's some paperwork to fill out. And um, once you've done that and received your registration, um, then you can go ahead and purchase one of these and um, be able to operate it. 
and it is primarily just uh, ADS-B out. So this provides the ability for air traffic control and for other pilots uh, to use other products and tools and software to monitor and obviously see you in the air. And so the idea here is that you can keep your eyes and hands uh, free and clear so that you can still look for traffic and all those kinds of things. But by transmitting your position, um, you're making yourself more visible to other people out there. So um, let's see, what else can I mention here? Um, the product is not cheap in the United States, um, but you know, how much is your safety really worth? Um, for me, um, it's, it, it's an absolute necessity for the kinds of big cross countries that I do. And, um, you know, it's, um, you know, some of the, uh, the areas that I even fly into, which are controlled airports, um, where I am actually talking to air, uh, air traffic control. Um, so I'm behaving much more like a, a general aviation aircraft in, in some of the flying that I'm doing. A couple more details uh, about this ADS-B. It weighs about 26 grams. It has this little small antenna that I just have here. This isn't waterproof. So obviously if you're flying in some weather where there's a lot of moisture, probably not ideal. But it was really simple. All I have to do, had to do was connect it up down here to an external battery. And uh, I have just, uh, oops, I guess I took it out already. But I just have a 14.8 volt um, um, battery that I connected it up there to and plugged it in. And then you can just use a, an, a phone app to actually uh, plug in all the, the information here. And, um, you know, at some point, what I should probably do is post more about um, sort of the settings. And I'm sure that you avionics are going to uh, have an updated document that will uh, talk uh, in much greater detail about um, how to purchase these, how to use them, and how to program them and make sure that they're um, set up correctly. Um, for those of you that haven't checked out, if you go to um, the Facebook 50X Challenge page, and uh, I'll probably post something on the 50X Challenge.info page um, with a whole bunch of links that you can actually see the uh, ADSB data uh, live and actually follow um, uh, pilots um, as they're flying these aircraft around. So, I, you know, I'm really feeling that this is an incredible uh, piece of additional safety. If you're the kind of person who's always flying low to the ground, and I would say sort of probably in that 1,000 foot or less, or maybe even as much as 1,500 feet and less um, AGL above the ground, then this product is not something that you're going to need. And if you're the kind of person who's buzzing around all over the place, um, it's also probably not the product that you, you, you're going to need or, or, or should even carry because, uh, first of all, at, at those low altitudes, it's not going to transport uh, any data. It just clogs up uh, um, the system more than anything else. And uh, it's really intended for these pilots who uh, want this optional a piece of additional equipment um, that can enhance their safety when they're flying in, in congested airspace uh, or at altitudes where they're much more likely to encounter other aircraft. Um, and I was going to add one more thing, but of course I can't remember what it is now. Um, but there you go. Um, you know, if you want to learn more about it, feel free to hit me up. And then of course, if you go to uavionics.com, their pre-sales um, uh, is absolutely fantastic. They'll answer your questions. And um, I couldn't be happier to um, have uh, this product uh, to make my journey from Sonoma to Oshkosh um, as safe as possible. So hit me up if you have some questions and uh, we'll go from there. Thanks a lot and have a great afternoon.